We've got a nice looking layout for our website, but we're still only using frame one of the timeline. Let's see what we can do to make use of the rest of it, and we'll get a foundation set up for basic frame by frame animation. We're going to be building off the last files we used in our last chapter where we set up our website layout. But if you're starting fresh like me, you can go to the Chapter 3 folder and open up the Flash Site 3 start file. And what I'm going to do is save this as our Flash Site. And I'm going to put it into our Flash Site folder. So let me just go to the desktop here. I'll go to our project files in the desktop. We'll go to the Flash website folder where we're storing all of our files. And if you've already created one, you can overwrite the file or just save it as Flash Site. I'll click Yes to Replace, and we can get started. Now in this chapter, we're going to be taking a look at the rest of the timeline. And that means all these other frames out here. Now I use the word frames because that's what these numbers at the top of our timeline represent. They're not a measurement of seconds directly. You could think of a frame as a single picture in a big roll of film, because that's pretty much what it is. All animation is simply replacing pictures over time and each one of those frames represents one of our pictures inside a flash. Now we convert those frames into time through a number called the frame rate, and that's down here in the properties of the movie itself. It's listed as FPS, and that stands for frames per second. Now a default CS4 movie will start out at 24 frames per second, but you can change that as you need to. I like to talk about frame rate a little bit at the very beginning because most people misconceive this as speed inside of your movie file. And what it's really representing is smoothness. When our animation is a whole bunch of pictures flipping by the screen, we need to flip them by fast enough so that you don't see individual pictures, but not necessarily so fast that the computer can't handle it. When we set up our flash movies, we want to choose a rate that's comparable to one that we might see when we're looking at other types of media, let's say on television or maybe even at a movie theater. A typical movie in a movie theater is running at 24 frames per second. And as you can probably attest to, that's a pretty good frame rate. You're not seeing individual pictures, it's all smoothly glued together, and it looks really good when you're sitting in the seat watching it. Now if we go for lower frame rates, I wouldn't recommend going much below 20 frames per second, because then we start getting to the point where our movie might look a little choppy, and we start seeing those individual pictures instead of the smooth motion. On the other hand, if you look at going faster than 30 frames per second, you're actually just making the computer do a lot of work that nobody's really going to see. Our American televisions run almost at 30 frames per second, 29.97 to be exact, so we can see that's a pretty good upper number as well. Now if your animation's not looking smooth enough, you might experiment with values a little bit over 30 frames per second, but I really wouldn't recommend going much higher. For our movie, I'm going to leave the default setting at 24 frames per second, and all that means is if we want to do a little bit of math, frame 24 up here represents one second of time in our timeline animation, and of course frame 48 would represent two seconds. As we start working in the timeline, you can see that the frame rate is reported right up here in the timeline, as well as the number of seconds. So when we start adding more frames to the timeline, it'll do some calculation for us.